Hello, and welcome to Building Codes for Building Decks, Ledgers and Lateral Loads. This session is all about flashing, but before we talk about flashing, we've got to talk about cladding and removing it. Now, it hasn't always been this way. These are photo examples of many, many decks I built on new homes in the 90s. All of them passed inspection, and all of them were built over the top of the cladding and connected right through, whether stucco or siding. Now this is a familiar photo to many deck builders, but it's a different kind of past now. This is in the past. It's not okay anymore, and never really was in the first place. But you don't have to believe me. Let's go to the ledger connection table for the structural provisions of this connection. And notice there's a maximum allowable sheathing thickness in each column and different sheathings that are permitted but these de details are gonna come in a session later. Now, if this code is this particular about the sheathing between the band joist and the ledger you're connecting it to it, it's pretty easy to understand why the cladding is gonna definitely have to be removed for that connection. But there's something else to talk about even before we get to the flashing. Because after you remove the cladding, there's a good chance you will find a water resistive barrier. And it may be asphalt paper, or it could be a proprietary product like this. There also might be none, because this has not always been universally required behind all claddings. The water-resistive barrier is terminated and flashed at penetrations like dryer vents or combustion air inlets, and at windows like you see here. But what about where ledgers attach to walls? Well, if we look at section R703.2, we find that the water resistive barrier must be terminated at penetrations and building appendages, which that pretty well speaks to decks. So after the cladding is removed, next comes the barrier, or not. You don't have to remove it, you just have to terminate it. So consider what's done with porch roof additions to protect the home during construction. The shingles are analogous to the cladding, and they must be removed for the structural connection of the roof over the other roof. But the underlayment can be left there for protection. When the shingles are installed later, the underlayment can be properly installed into the new valley. And this is in the same way that the water-resistive barrier over a deck can be later terminated when the flashing is installed. Now, going back to that page in the code we just looked at, we find this part that requires the water resistive barrier termination to also direct the water out from behind the exterior cladding. And that brings us to flashing because that's exactly what it does. Now, since this is about decks, let's start with the deck section. Now, this section here is only gonna be about the flashing materials. And the first requirement is that it be corrosion resistant metal. While that might seem easy to understand, the IRC has provided a definition for corrosion resistance, and it's pretty obvious, but it does speak to the environment that the flashing is in. So depending on the environment, galvanized steel could work, but if you've got a lot of salt spray from a house on the coastline, you may want stainless steel or aluminum. And take a quick note here of the barrier between the aluminum and the copper treated lumber. Here's an example where they used copper flashing. Wow, copper. But if we go back to this section again and we read further, we see that the flashing has to be compatible with the structure and the decking, basically the materials it's in contact with. So copper may have been selected in that photo due to the high copper content in the treated material. It may also be the reason we saw the barrier between the aluminum and the treated material. Now we also see that non-metallic material is permitted, but it must be approved. And we learned in the first course of the Building Codes for Building Deck series that approved means it's acceptable to the building official. So would they approve a plastic or vinyl flashing material? Well, why not? Now all we've done so far is talk about the material. We've got to also go to the footnotes in the ledger connection table to find out more about flashing. This footnote points us over to section R703.4 for more details. And it also tells us a little about the purpose, which is the flashing should prevent water from contacting the house band joist. Oh boy, more code sections. 
Now we're going to put this one up on the chalkboard and talk about it step by step. But first I want to take note of where flashing is required. Here it says where decks or stairs attach to wood frame construction. Let's look at these newly rebuilt stairs. Notice the deterioration of the siding where the old stairs were up against the house. Well, if we look underneath, we see that the builder attached stairs to wood frame construction. And though I applaud the desire of the builder perhaps to brace these stairs laterally, well, maybe not. Maybe it was the lack of the connection here at the top of this stringer. But neither, either way, I tend to recommend for bracing stairs laterally to brace them within themselves. And that way they can be held off the house a little bit. Because otherwise, if they are connected to the house, there's going to be some flashing that's necessary. And if they're not connected, brace them independently and perhaps a little gap so you can allow the debris and water to flow through and not damage the cladding. Now here's a similar example. Notice the damaged siding from the previous deck connection, but look at where the new ledger is. It's attached to concrete construction, not a wood frame assembly, and thus no flashing is required. See, the flashing isn't really there just to protect the ledger. We'll learn later that that has to be decay resistant material. I mean, if we had a powder coated steel ledger, that's pretty decay and corrosion resistant. We'd still flash the ledger. Many deck builders know this well, as they have faced major repairs to a house after tearing out a deck that didn't have flashing. All right, let's go back here, and now let's put this code section on the chalkboard and break it down a bit. Right from the get-go, we see that all flashing has to be approved corrosion resistant, not just the metallic. Now the only directions provided for installation of flashing is that it must be done shingle fashion. Now I know what you're all thinking when I say shingle fashion because it's confused so many people that it was some wacky European fashion show that we actually have a definition now in chapter two to keep us straight. Okay, here it is, but I'm not gonna read it to you. So I wanna show it to you. Here's a roof. And when we install shingles, they're placed at the bottom and we overlap them working their way up all the way as we go to the roof. Shingle fashion, right? Now, when the rain falls on top, the lapping sheds this water to over and over and over to the next course. And no sealants for water resistance are even used. Now, let's replace this roof with like box-shaped appendages, right? And use flashing shingle fashion. Like the shingles, we would install flashing from the bottom with each course overlapping the one that's below. And when our water drops, it sheds all the way down. Which way? Shingle fashion. I know, these are worse than dad jokes, but when you find a guy making artistic dresses from shingles online, hey, what can you do? All right, back to the code. We see we have another statement in here about the purpose for flashing. And this is coming from chapter seven, saying to stop the entry of water into the wall cavity. But we already got a similar message to this from that footnote we, we read in chapter five in the table. Chapter seven does provide some more information about non-metallic flashing, like that self-adhered products must comply with the AAMA 711 standard. It's a test standard for material. Now, the last thing I want to mention about the chapter seven flashing provisions is this part here that will bring us back full circle to the water resistive barrier. It says that the flashing shall extend to the surface of the exterior wall finish. So as this example reveals, the face of the ledger really is the surface of the exterior wall finish. And so back to where we started, this is what would drain water shingle fashion from the resistive, water resistive barrier to the flashing and to the exterior. My name is Glenn Mathewson. Thanks for learning with me. This video was provided to you by buildingcodecollege.com, where we go beyond the words.